What's up, everybody? Nazgul 2K1 here out with another episode of Nerd Rage. And today we're working on something a little different than my normal content. Uh, <laughs> I had to take a few minutes, even if it's just a few, and trust me, I could probably go on for days on this. I wanted to discuss the thread title, Altered Carbon Season 2. Now, for those of you who don't know, Altered Carbon is a sci-fi series that is on Netflix. It's adapted from a book series. And the first season is considered by pretty much all, everyone I've talked to to be like the pinnacle sci-fi release of this decade, if not the last 20 years. It's that good. Uh it pretty much has everything you could ever ask for in a sci-fi series. I mean, you have mystery, suspense, drama, character development, plot development, action, suspense. I mean, it has everything. And it executes it nearly, nearly flawlessly. You can see the reviews for it pretty much anywhere online. Uh, the, uh, the overall you know, out of 10 for, so to speak for me was a 9.9. .9, okay. If not a perfect 10, I, I don't like giving out perfect scores because everybody can find a fault in something. So I would give it a nine out of 10 easy. And I do it again all day long, every day. Now I am outside today cause it's, believe it or not, it doesn't really look like it, but it's actually really nice out for the first time in a long time. So I'm kind of chilling outside on my deck and I'm also holding up my camera because as you know, I still don't have a desktop camera. I'm working on it. Now, let's get into the meat. Season two dropped, and to give you a comparison, in season one, I watched every episode back to back, nonstop, didn't stop till it was done. I was that hooked. It took me four days to watch season two, and that should give you a big clue on where this review is going. And for those of you who are too long, didn't read, let me give you the short, short version. What the fuck happened? What were they thinking? Wow. That's, that's, wow. I can't even, like, I'm legitimately angry at the developers, or excuse me, not developers, I'm thinking of video game terminology, sorry. I'm legitimately angry at the writers, producers, pretty much the, the guy who brought these people coffee, I'm mad at him too. That's how mad I am about season two. It's... I can't even begin to describe to you on every single level how badly they fucked it up. I'm going to go short version because, again, I don't want this to run too long. And, you know, me holding a camera isn't exactly the uh, epitome of YouTube content. So bear with me. Let's start with the story. It sucked. Let's move on. <laughs> uh I wish I could say more. I, I mean, th there's nothing good about the story of season two. Nothing. The writing was so lazy, it's it defies description. This is like a 12-year-old wrote a sci-fi show, and they ran with it and thought, let's see what happens. Well, let me tell you what happened. It fucking sucks. Nothing makes sense. It's all jumbled and messed up. Everything's contradicting itself, including its own season one. They literally just blow that shit out the window and just be like, hey, let's throw in all this new terminology and pretend all this shit happened in season one. And you're going, B -b but it didn't happen in season one, sir. Fuck you, it happened in season one. Okay, whatever. Just to run down a few examples of how awful this is, okay? Let, let's start with Tak, because... Casting old boy to play talk in season two, I gave I was well, I gave him a legitimate shot. I wanted him to succeed because number one, Takashi Kovach is like fucking awesome, and the book series is fantastic. So I really wanted them to cast a guy who could nail this like they did in the first season. They didn't. I'm sorry. I I can't blame him completely though. I really can't. A lot of the fault of this horrible, horrible fucking season is the script writers. They gave him jack shit to work with and he did the best he could. And he's getting a lot of hate online for, you know, ruining Kovach. It ain't his fault, people. If you're actually listening to the script and watching what you're watching, trust me, he didn't have much to work with here. Kovach in this season 
is a complete douchebag. I wish I could say different. I wish I could tell you, no, that's not the case, but he's a douchebag. He's an envoy. He's like literally the baddest motherfucker there ever was. And he spends the entire season getting his ass kicked every single fight. He loses a fight. I shit you not here. He loses a fight to himself, but his self has no envoy training. What the fuck? All right. This is the equivalent of me spending the next 25 years learning Kung Fu day in, day out, nonstop. And then traveling back in time to my 17 year old, not done shit self. And then getting my ass handed to me in a Kung Fu fight. What the fuck was that? And it gets it just goes downhill from there. The casting was just awful. Every part of this show fell apart from the top all the way to the bottom. The elite bounty hunter chick he pairs up with, you know, assemble your crew. They're disposable, you know, envoy teachings as we learned in season one. But he gets attached as usual, which is what makes the show special. The problem was the bounty hunter chick, whose name I don't even remember because I don't give two shits about her, was overhyped, underdelivered, badly cast. I mean, like one scene, she walks up a flight of stairs and you can see her the next scene. She's like, <gasps> and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? You're supposed to be an elite badass. You can't take a flight of stairs. Are you fucking serious? And then she doesn't really do anything. Giving more of her backstory just basically is irrelevant because she had no depth. And when they tried to give her that depth and that development, they did it in the most asshat way possible with her dad showing up for about four minutes of screen time and then immediately getting killed. And then they focus on this like there's supposed to be some big emotional payoff of her dad dying. Meanwhile, I'm sitting there going, well, she just spent the last four minutes calling her dad a piece of crap and she doesn't want to see or have anything to do with him and fuck that guy and I'm sitting there going well fuck that guy and then they're like oh you must feel emotion he died I'm like no that's not how this works then we come to the one of the two villains and you know I, I, I guess you could technically say there was three but I only really call them two one was Political Bad Chick, and again, don't care what her name is because she was so paint-by-numbers, predictable, and pathetic, nobody cared. I have spoken with hundreds of people online, forums. I literally was like, did anyone even so much as give two shits about this chick? And pretty much it was a resounding, no, not really, what the hell, she was stupid. She could have literally not been in the story at all, and no one would have noticed. Okay, and when I say one-dimensional, I mean one-dimensional is giving her one dimension too much. This chick was straight up predictable. She had no background, no development, no story buildup, no emotion whatsoever. She just stood there in almost every scene going like this. I am a woman. Brah. And that was it. And you're going, what the hell? She was basically set up as the series' main villain. She's the main protagonist that's supposed to be driving the plot, besides the Elder, okay? Jaeger really didn't have much to do with the story, uh, other than, you know, he's there, okay? That's pretty much all he did. And we'll get into his fucking bullshit in a minute. But our little uh, mayor of Harlan's world... Who, by the way, if you didn't figure out she killed her own dad, the second, hey, where'd your father go? Oh, he retired to a private island. Yeah. Yeah, that's where he is. Yeah, he's on a private somewhere. Uh, the first thing I said was she killed him. And sure enough, and they were they trying to make this big payoff reveal like, oh, she killed him. And I'm going, boring. We already figured that out eight episodes ago. Yeah, it was just bad. And then you move on to Jaeger. Or Carrera. See, I remember his name because at least he was decently cast. You can say what you will about everybody else, but Colonel Carrera was actually 
a pretty good cast job. He really did nail the, I guess you want to say the conflicting emotions that Jaeger would feel. But he still didn't have much to work with. They hype up this elite wedge squad. Oh, it's the wedge. Oh, look at this. They're oh, we're the wedge. And they do nothing. In fact, correct me if I'm wrong, but like several of them get killed by the elite bounty hunter. And the one that Tok fights, he has to be saved by the elite bounty hunter because, again, Tok just spends the whole fucking series getting his ass kicked and he's not the elite of jack shit. So then we come to Poe. Now, let me be clear. The only reason this show is even worth fucking watching for season two, the only thing that's redeemable about season two is fucking Poe. Poe continues his development from season one and his arc. You're totally fucking blown away. On everything that happens to him, you feel that emotion from Poe. And it's just unbelievable. It's incredible to watch. That is the only reason why season two is even worth turning on is Pope. The set pieces were generic, low budget crap. The plot was non existent, even when it, you know, you try to come up with this and you had a decent concept here, but it was so piss poorly executed that you just can't get into it. And then they're sitting there going, oh, well, uh, well the elders and the orbitals and angel fire and blah, 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 blah. And you're going, wait. The whole time Tok was flashing back to Stronghold in Season 1, he was on Harlan's world. So where was all this shit in the flashbacks? Where was mentions of Angel Fire, Orbitals, Elder Races, shit like that? None of it gets mentioned. It just fucking poofs and they pull it out of their ass into thin air and be like, ha ha, look at this, blah blah blah. And you're going, what? Now, the last thing I want to go over is, oh, I guess you could call it a summary. I need to wrap this up. Overall, season two is a two out of 10. It's a two out of 10. Poe is the only reason it gets the two. Everything else is just terrible from the ground up. It's terrible. It, it and it just breaks my fucking heart. The, the overall writing went to the toilet. The plot development went into the toilet. The set pieces went into the toilet. The fucking story arc went into the toilet. It, it was just... This was like some CW shit. Like, this is fucking Green Arrow with a slightly higher budget. It, it's just awful on every single level. <sighs> and, and what kills me, I guess the greatest problem with that show is that season one exists. That's its main problem. If season two was existed in a vacuum, it might be passable. But we have season one. We have the gold standard. You can't release crap and then expect us to like it. We know what season one was. Anyway, this is Nazgul 2K1 signing off. Have a good day.